First, of course, uh, as you guys know, I don't use letter tiers anymore. So we're gonna do So as you know, I do not want to do uh, letter tiers. I've talked about this in so many YouTube videos about, I guess like last year I started doing like just defining what the tiers are about so that I don't have to do this song and dance. It's not a tier list, it's too early. So these are just my impressions after playing the game. A good amount since release. It's been definitely more than 10 days at this point. It's been a couple weeks since the game came out. I got a good amount of experience uh, against basically everybody. I guess I'll just make the chart first and then I'll just talk about my thoughts. Not in order really, just like off the top of my head how I'm feeling. First is Jury. So Jury is really, really strong. So one is she has a very, very fast drive rush. So not all drive rushes are the same speed. So hers is almost like a, it's like a jump scare. Hers is like really, really fast. Her dash is really, really fast. Her buttons are pretty normal and neutral, but she has that jump scare drive rush. So the combination of the two is pretty hard to deal with, especially in a game that's supposed to be like footsies based. The fact that she has like a jump scare into low forward is really, really strong. She's able to alter her air momentum in the air with dive kick. Uh, she has a plus two button. So combined with her uh, drive rush, it is especially strong she's like plus seven there and she's able to cover uh knockdowns with light fireball with slow fireball which is pretty valuable so her pressure is really good on top of that i feel like she uses the system especially well because right now you know we still have people playing like street fighter you know like people are starting to dig into the system to see what type of game it is but most people if you boot up a random stream right now you see them doing like the typical street fighter thing and she like doesn't do any of it she feels like a rule breaker type character honestly for me the only sad thing is that it's it's on jury and I, it's not like chun li or something because I, I i think i feel like she's like edgy but seeing all the stuff she can do in the system like I've, I've been thinking about trying her out right right now my my really big thing that i've been thinking about is like like how well do you use the system especially like drive rush and stuff and the potential of the character to either induce burnout if you're not like really following the game you won't know about this but some characters um and there's a couple characters that are already doing this quite a bit are really good at burning your your drive meter so it's like let's say they react to your drive impact with their drive impact so then they'll do some special combo and then they'll do a sequence to like get rid of the rest of your drive bar. And I'm pretty sure she can, I'm pretty sure she has one actually. I just have to double check. But I think she is going to do really bad things to the system basically. And I think she seems really strong. Where where Luke is like kind of the opposite, where like, I feel like he's just good, just good all round, fast projectile, good damage, good typical Street Fighter stuff. At least my perception of him is the total opposite of Jury where I'm like, oh, Jury does dirty things in the system where Luke's, Luke to me is, he is just good at doing what the game really wants you to do with the system. He doesn't give a fuck about how much drive resource he has. He has bombos. Like, I just think he uses the system well, where Jury is like, kills the system. Uh, Ken is kind of the same too. I think Ken, not only does he use the, the system well, he has a lot of plus normals. He has really, really good corner carry without using resource, which is pretty important. Definitely a thing you're gonna see more and more as people uh, optimize the game is how do they use their drive meter for stuff because everything has different costs, right? So because uh, Ken's being beast and in like Katsu or DP, he's always just right on you. He doesn't really have to use uh, resource to corner carry uh which is really really nice then there's dj dj is uh so dj was my my original top three in this game were dj honda and um jp i think it was dj honda and jp dj is fucking nuts so first he has the teleport drive rush that's really big he has a lot of like visually weird movement options like he has like the weird flip kick thing he has like dandy like guilty gear dandy stuff he has fireballs and he has fireball feints a lot of stuff that beats fireballs on reaction like armor throwing it or projectile involving it his fireball feint is really fast so it animates the same as the normal fireballs but if he does um 
if you it has a different voice clip that's how i've been fighting against it if his voice clip he goes like hey hey normally he goes like come on come on or like shock whatever or whatever whatever the fuck he says normally uh but when he when he does a thing he's like hey hey right so if but it looks the same as a fireball so if you're not listening to the cue and you do your unsafe anti-fireball he kills you he does a lot of damage his he can again teleport on you from like really far good offense like he 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 Honestly, his neutral control is is just so fucking out of control that like, like most characters don't have projectile things on top of it. I I think that's that shit is really extra. So not only does he have these weird jump ins and he has a teleport. He jokingly are calling it a teleport. His drive rush is like juries where he just like jump scares you like a horror movie. But then just in case you're trying to play a projectile game with him, he has like a a super good feint for you that you have to train against. I, I think, and his damage is really high. Like, I, I think he's fucking crazy. He, I think he's really, 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 really good. By the way, in, if I was playing this game seriously right now, like seriously for tournaments, right now I've talked about the three character theory, right? The three characters I would play would be Honda, Jury, and DJ, or Honda, Jury, and Guile. Those would be my main three. Jury for the rushdown, Guile, DJ for like the projectile zoning, and uh, Honda is the kind of all-arounder defensive type. Those would be my three picks uh, for the three character theory right now. DJ's crazy. Uh, DJ's crazy. I don't know what to say. Guile is like on the line. I think Guile's pretty strong. Uh, he uses the system really well. I don't know what they're going to do to Guile without dumpstering him, basically. But he has a lot of stuff to make you not jump uh, because he can like drive rush and like punish your jumps. He's still like also classic Guile. But then he has like a lot of like these projectile setups and like sonic boom upgrades that are pretty hard for people to deal with but outside of those because i have a feeling that he might not be top tier but he's close just because my perception of the top tier are like rule breaker stuff like like jury jury and dj uh also he was the best character in the beta let's go to the seem strong characters so i feel like the main thing that they're missing that doesn't make me feel like they're top top tier is that they lean too hard into one thing, if that makes sense. So, for example, like, I think Kimberly's strong. I think her upgrade super is really good. I think she has a ton of potential for development. But I feel like she leans way too hard in her, like, into, like, these these ninja moves that she has. Like, the sliding moves. I, I think the character leans too much into, like, offense and setup. And doesn't have, like, the complete toolkit. Or like Chun Li, kind of where Ch I, uh, now Chun Li is different. Where I think she's actually a good all rounder. Kimberly, Blanca, Jer and Chun. Those four characters have the most potential to rise. I think so. Chun Chun is actually that I just don't think she's developed enough. Uh, Cause she has a lot of good stuff. She has good offense. She has great anti throw. She has a lot of combos. She's got a lot of mix up opportunities. She can follow up her supers with like combos there. She has a lot of safe jumps. She has good corner carry. Um, she doesn't have a throw loop, but she just has like good and like really good anti throw. Over time, we'll see. I've already started seeing Chun players doing like crazy aggressive like rushdown sequences and stuff. She is hard to play, <laughs> so that I I think just we gotta wait a couple of months to see like power Chun, like powerful powerful Chun. But I, I can kind of see, kind of see that she has a lot of potential. Ryu pretty straightforward as usual. In my head, I think the main difference between him and Ken really, at least as I am right now, is the drive meter requirement. Like in my head. Correct me if I'm wrong on this, but it seems that Ryu has to use drive resource for stuff more than Ken, and that's like the main differentiator outside of the kicks. Besides that, the characters are pretty similar, I want to say, besides besides the, the dragon crazy kicks, thank you for that, and uh, drive rush usage. Because basically that Ryu has to use drive rush to convert more than Ken does, from, from my understanding. Honda, my man. My goat, Lo love me some sumo. He is really, really good at uh, using the system. He is really, really good at doing a lot of damage. Honestly, his main thing is that I think he's just gonna get matchup checked over time. He has nothing that's like blatantly cheap. He has a lot of strong stuff, but there's no like, this is some cheap bullshit to go for. It's basically like headbutt is bullshit. He can bait your parry with a bunch of stuff and he does a lot of damage. If you're playing this game for tournaments, I would not solo main Honda. I, I, I would recommend playing Honda for sure, but I would not solo main him. I would definitely recommend playing another character of him, but I think he's an amazing support character. Like, if you're playing uh, a character in Seam Strong or lower, and you want to play another character, then 
I recommend Honda over almost every character, actually. He's really easy to learn how to play. He, again, he does a lot of damage. He's really easy to anti-air with. Uh, he's, he's just really, really good at what he does. And he, fall, he falls perfectly in my three character theory as a defensive character. Love it. Was not expect to, expecting to like Honda so much. On the other side is Marissa, who, funny enough, I kind of think she's similar to Honda in that... Because this is the thing about why I ended up enjoying and liking my time with Honda so much. I was surprised, but... Basically, the thing I like about Honda, and the thing that I see in Marissa, if you're a new player who's never played a fighting game before, you would need some help. But if you're like a more intermediate and advanced fighting game player who's never played Street Fighter, and you play Honda or Marissa, these two characters very clearly show you exactly why everything's going on. So like, when I play Honda, when someone jumps, I know exactly why they jump. When someone jumps twice, I know exactly why. Everything my opponent does, I could very easily tell why they're doing it. And because Honda's so simple, the responses are really simple. Marissa's kind of the same. She does crazy damage. She has the armor stuff. So she's she's the first character out of these characters we've talked about that I could see go down. Because, for example, um, what was going around Twitter the other day was that she doesn't have like traditional armor. She has uh, art like an armor box that you can like avoid so i think uh, over time people will learn how to counter this and it'll make because that's that's her gimmick basically is that she has these these super strong armor moves that she can fight against they're really good and again she has a lot of damage and she and she has like a lot of like at a baseline simple strong guessing games in neutral revolving around armor so for example she she has the equivalent of bandit bringer right uh so typically you'd be like oh you use lows to beat the armor right but she has a armor move that hops over lows also. But I think over time, people will find more unique counterplay than specifically just hitting with lows. They'll start finding buttons that are like, oh, this is like a standing button that doesn't hit the feet, but it hits just under the armor box. So I could, you know, like that type of shit, I think it's gonna be a struggle for Marissa in the long term. But her damage output kinda, kinda keeps her in it. Uh, we'll see. I, in my head, I think she will go down slightly. Uh, then there's Cammy. So it seems that Cammy is the most contentious character in the game. As in, from my being in this, like talking about Street Fighter these past couple weeks and talking to different players and stuff, people don't agree how good Cammy is, <laughs> basically. Where in Japan, everyone's saying that she's top tier, right? Uh, I Punk said he thought Cammy was very strong but not top tier, which is my assessment of her. Uh, but I've heard people say Cammy sucks. So what's going on with Cammy? So Cammy, amazing walk speed, great mid range buttons. Uh, she's got the dive kick. Uh, she has a DP that switches sides, and she has bombles. Oh, and she has like the safe unblock, spiral arrow space, and stuff like that. Her average damage is not high, uh, and I don't feel like she has any blatantly like. I feel like one thing that people are really focusing on in this game is like, does your character have something that's like blatantly cheap? Like, like Headbutt, for example, or um, like Blanca Chan, or like JP Crystal setups, or like, uh, you know, like shit like that. Like uh, the Spray Cat setups, right? Cammy doesn't have that stuff. So I feel like, I feel like if you think Cammy sucks, it's kind of like, I'm, I'm gonna say it. It's kind of like saying Kai sucks in Guilty Gear right now. It's kind of like saying Kai sucks in, in Guilty Gear. It's more of a reflection of your skill in the game than the character. You know what I'm saying? I actually have a pretty good outlook on this character because of how fast she is uh, and how she can turn around situations on defense really easily with her EX reversal um, and how, how amazing her die kick is as a counter poke for certain stuff. I don't really think her dive kick is traditional usage or what people expect it to be, and that's why some people think it's not as strong as it could be. But the fact that she doesn't have anything like blatantly cheap, and then her average damage is not that high, I could see why people say she's not strong, but I just disagree. I, I, I will say skill issue. Yes, I will say skill issue. I will say skill issue on this one. I think she's strong. However, I, I will say she's definitely not top tier. Because uh, she, she's not she doesn't break any rules. Uh, then we go to JP. So JP is on everybody everybody. So many people hate this character. The only people who don't hate this character play characters who are good against him. So uh, he has the thing this this I recommend. Uh, I don't know how many of you in here 
where like Street Fighter is your second game. If you play a lot of fighting games or if you've been in the fighting game scene for a long time, you you would have probably noticed this over time. Eventually, if you're paying attention, you will notice this. Street Fighter is a legacy IP. So a good way, one thing they do in new games, they always add new characters along with the returning characters. They learned really early. Capcom learned really, really, like in 1999, Capcom learned, hey, it's a bad idea to not bring back characters that people like. Maybe Ryu should be in Street Fighter. Instead of making a game called Street Fighter with fucking Chris from Texas, maybe Ryu and Ken should be in Street Fighter, okay? The compromise is, what they'll do is they'll have a bunch of returning favorites, and then they'll add a couple new characters. Guilty Gear did this too, right? So Guilty Gear has like Soul, Kai, like Axel, Milia, Zato, right? But then they added like Giovanna, Nagoriyuki, Gold Lewis, like they added new characters too. A really good way to get into a legacy game is to play a not legacy character, play a new character. Why? Because let's pretend that this is the timeline where I only play Street Fighter. So if you are an 09, if you started Street Fighter, Street Fighter 4, you've been playing Street Fighter for more than a decade. You know Ken, you know DJ, you know Jury, you know Chun Li, you know Ri, you know them, bro. You've been going to school with these motherfuckers for a long time now. So even in a new system, even though this is a brand new system, it's Street Fighter 6, they added new mechanics, new system, blah, blah, blah. It's still Ryu, it's still Honda. You have at least a baseline idea of how to fight these characters immediately. So if you play a new player who plays those characters, even though the system is different, your strategies will still work. In Strive, even though Strive is so different from Exert and XX, this is still the reason why at the beginning, uh, People who didn't play like Soul Ram, May, but who played legacy characters, that's why they looked so good so fast, right? You can use myself as an example, right? I played Milia. Uh, you, people were like, how'd you figure out all this Milia shit so quick? Because I played Milia and Expert. Oh shit. One of the big reasons why people hate JP so much is that they've, they, he's just a, he's just a new guy. <laughs> he's a new guy and he has a bunch of knowledge checks and if you don't know how to fight them and you definitely don't because he's new to the game, then you're fucked. And he, his, his setups are really, really good. His zoning is pretty good. His mid-range is better than you would expect. Uh, his reversal at a glance is very, very annoying to deal with, but it actually just depends on your character, how annoying it is to deal with. A lot of people are, are uh, for lack of a better term, making money off JP, right? Because new character, not legacy, lots of knowledge checks, lots of unique stuff, and they're, they're in a... They're in the training room, just grinding, grinding, grinding out setups. So, but I think long term, he's gonna be just a stable, strong character. But people are already finding like really strong anti JP tech. Like he can't uh, counter projectiles, for example, how to move against him and stuff like that. So I think long term, he's still gonna be like very setup focused, very sequence focused. Uh, there was a Twitter clip going around, I want to say, of uh, a JP player who counter drive impacted somebody and then took away the force them in burnout and did like a like a 50 50 high low with like rising jump kick plus like the crystal it was, it was some crazy shit his potential is very high but in my opinion there are safeguards there that are keeping him from top tier but you you see him perform well basically the whole game and in my three character theory I would definitely have him in line as a zoner if like or a projectile character if these two didn't exist Let's move to Blanca Chan. So Blanca, uh, I think, is another character that has very high potential in this game because of Blanca Chan. So he has stuff that's similar to Honda as far as like his approach to neutral and uh, being able to understand why people are doing things against you easily because of your moveset. But uh, if you haven't been paying attention, they've been labbing this item, Blanca Chan, and they have like they have ways of like draining your drive bar. JP Blanca, Kim, and Chun have the best set play out of uh, like traditional what we think of as set play out of all the casts. So this is a small side note, but I had a pretty interesting conversation yesterday with a friend. He asked me if I felt like Street Fighter Six knockdowns were like Dragon Ball knockdowns. I thought about it for a second, and uh, he's kind of spitting. And what I what he meant is that the person who gets knocked down in Street Fighter feels strong. It feels like they have a lot of options, but there's two, three actually, very critical things that make me cool with the Street Fighter knockdown, where Dragon Ball's like, oh my god, bro. Okay, three. The only true comeback mechanic in Street Fighter 6 is critical art damage. Nothing else. There's no sparking, there's no awakening, none of that stuff. 
So I don't have to worry about like reversal sparking, guard cancel sparking, any of them. Two, Dragon Ball Fighters has 30 frames variable delay wake up. So what that means is, so Street Fighter 6 has two wake up timings basically. You have in place and roll back, right? So they're slightly different speeds, but just two. Dragon Ball has like up tech, neutral tech, back tech, right? But then you could sit there and when you sit there, you can actually change the timing where you get up for 30 frames. When Street Fighter, you can't really change the timing, you just like roll back or whatever. So just the fact that there's only two wake ups to worry about and not like all this variability is also very chill. The last thing that's very chill is that parry in Street Fighter and Dragon Ball's reflect are pretty similar. Like they beat, they, they beat everything. So like in, in Dragon Ball, reflect beats highs, lows, cross ups, projectiles, right? Uh, in Street Fighter, parry beats highs, lows, cross ups, projectiles right the difference is one when you parry somebody you don't just fucking send them full screen <laughs> right you don't just send them away they're still in your face i i believe parry uh makes you be closer than normal but besides that not really perfect parry has a small window and uh and the combo is rescaled where reflect you die if you combo them and last uh i can't fucking parry with ryu and ken comes flying from the moon and Ryu goes away, and then the, the Ken tag is fucking safe. <laughs> that doesn't exist. Like, if they get a parry, that's not a perfect parry. I'm like, well, they parried me. So even though I think the person who's waking up in Street Fighter is strong, I still think overall, the person who got the knockdown has a, has the advantage. I would say it's like a 65-35 attacker versus defender advantage, where in Dragon Ball, I would legit think there's many situations where the defender has the advantage and not the attacker but anyway back to blanca so blanca uh his knockdowns are really 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 strong in comparison because he has blanca chan coverage uh so he's like one of the only characters in the game that have act like true classic set play looping style offense which i think uh it gives him great potential in the game uh then we have manon manon is a character that's pretty popular obviously uh obviously if you just look at her you would know why like they've been getting some heat uh i've been hearing people call manon players down players because they're just like yeah she's just i right. but they're right she's she, <laughs> she she's I. Right. She, I, I i think she's better than i i think she is good uh it mainly in that the longer the game goes on the better she is and street fighter tends to be a long game i guess it's like three shining things about her her neutral is very good she plays mid-range very well and she forces you to make choices. I guess it's four things. She forces you to make choices. Okay, five things. Because she's not that executionally... Like, she doesn't demand a lot execution-wise from the player. And the longer the game goes on, the better she is. Despite her... She has, like, flaw... Like, she has, like, nothing, like, game break or anything. Uh, but I definitely think she rewards a skilled player. So Jamie, I heard a lot of people say Jamie sucks. I also hear people say Jamie's underrated. I feel like the sentiment comes from a lot of his best stuff is locked behind the power-up. And unlike Manon, the power-up doesn't carry between rounds, so you have to do it like very often. So I think long-term, the way he's going to end up being is that one, he's definitely going to be mid-tier. Uh, and two, is that his matchup spread is going to be really polarizing because the characters that have full screen presence won't let him drink up easily with the characters who don't and have to pull up to mid-range kind of are forced to come at him because if not they're going to just try to force the power up type thing it, it really is just like a lot of his stuff is locked behind the, the power up and it resets every round then struggle bus characters so i think these characters um okay out of these characters sim is the one that i probably know the absolute least of them for for zangief and lily they basically both have the, a common thing everyone has like their own gimmick and the game encourages you to go for this thing with the character and just zangief and lily i don't feel like it's very rewarding in that you don't keep your advantage when you go for these things that makes sense so like getting grabs of zangief at least from what i've seen in matches i played and from people playing uh is rewarding damage wise and also he has the most life but he doesn't get good situations off it uh lily kind of same thing she really just doesn't have anything outstanding i want to say besides her being able to power up her uh charge attacks like her lunge attack she doesn't feel super punishing when you're wrong against her for for sim i'll be honest this one's just kind of hearsay i've just heard people say he's not good in my experience of playing against him i just found him kind of weird but i didn't feel like he was necessarily not good 
I wonder how much of it is he needs to be developed because he's just a weird character. And that's all. Uh, any questions? How do you guys feel? Talk to me. How do you feel?